Hello, my name is David Larson, amateur radio operator KK4WW. Today we're here in Floyd, Virginia at the Floyd Community Amateur Radio Station, M4USA. Today I want to discuss reading schematic symbols, schematic diagrams, identifying electronic components, and in doing this we're going to use this Conair transmitter, about 50 years old, but it uses discrete components and that's what we want to talk about today. I was fortunate to buy this at the Frostfest this year, 2012. This is a 50 year old unit uh, made by National Radio Institute as a training device and that's what we're going to use it for today. So let's take a look inside. So let's start with resistors. This is the schematic symbol for a resistor. Here you see resistor labeled R2. Here's a resistor R1. Let's see, here's another resistor over here, R3. Here's the symbol for a capacitor. You see this one, C5, and here's the value, 0 0.001 microfarads. And here's another capacitor, C4. This is the value, and by the way, here's the value of the resistor. This is 100 watt. This little symbol, omega, is ohm, stands for ohm. So this is 100 ohm, and the 1W stands for 1 watt. It's the power dissipation of 1 watt. If they're unlabeled, they're usually half watt or less. Only the higher power resistors are labeled with wattage. Now here's the symbol for a crystal. This is what controls the frequency of our transmitter. Here's a symbol for a uh, little incandescent lamp, which is used as part of the circuitry. This kind of symbol here is an RF choke. It's an inductor. It's an RF choke, and we have the value here, 2.5 millihenries. Here's another capacitor. This is a symbol for ground. You see a lot of grounds in here. This is tied to the circuit ground, this little symbol right here. Uh, here's another capacitor in here. This, of course, is a symbol for a tube. So let's uh, continue over here. Here's another resistor. Resistor. Again, here's the symbol for an RF choke, which is an inductor, special purpose inductor, RF choke. And here's a 5 watt resistor. I'm sorry, this is a 5 this is R5, 100 ohm, 1 watt resistor, and this is a parallel connection. So this connection here is tied across the resistor. We call this a parallel connection. These resistors and this resistor and inductor are tied in parallel. Here is another inductor, RF choke. Moving down to the power supply, these are symbols for diodes. Symbols for diodes. Generally, the positive end of the diode is this end right here. And uh, here's some more capacitors. You notice these are electrolytic, so they're, po they're polarity conscious. So this is the plus end of the capacitor, the minus end of the capacitor. These are other large capacitors. These are 50 microfarad capacitors. Moving on back here, this is a symbol for a transformer to transform line voltage into high voltage and filament voltage. So these are the windings. This is a secondary winding for the filament, secondary winding for the high voltage. These are the rectifiers that convert this into a DC voltage because we have an AC voltage here. Here's the primary. This is a symbol for a switch to turn it on and off. And here's a little, little neon light with a limiting resistor here and uh, some bypass capacitors. These are capacitors and this ties to your 110 volts. See these ground symbols along here? We already know what that is. This is a symbol for a variable capacitor, meaning we can change the capacitance by some method, and we'll look at that in a moment. Here's a fixed capacitor. Here's an inductor, another inductor, and this is a switch. This is a rotary switch with three position. We call this a three position, single pole, three position switch. Here's the pole. Position here would be 15 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, switching in different inductances so that this tank circuit will resonate on 15 or 40 or 80 meters. Here's a symbol for the output. So we've pretty much covered the uh, components that we see here. There are certainly other electronic components, but these are the basic discrete components. Nowadays we don't use discrete components a whole lot. Most of our circuitry today is integrated circuit or large scale or very large scale integrated circuits and the components we use often are surface mount technology and they're very, very small. So this is old fashioned, 1950s, 60s type circuitry. We still see some of it, we still use some of it.
And we're going to look at the actual components and compare them with the schematic diagram. So this is a schematic diagram. These are the schematic symbols and the way the components are drawn on the schematic. Well, let's take a look at the electronic components here of the Conair 400 uh, transmitter. Here's the power transformer that converts the AC line voltage to the high voltage and the filament voltage. Back here is a couple of uh, ceramic capacitors. Here's the back of the meter and the two connections to the meter. Here's the lamp down here that shows we're on or off. And another uh, resistor in here, fixed resistor. Here's the uh, RF choke. There's another capacitor, ceramic capacitor here. Here's a little parasitic uh, filter. It's a resistor and inductor. And of course, here's the tube. This is a tube that produces the RF 25 watts. Back here is the inductor, part of the Pi network, this bigger inductor right here. This is the Pi network. And here are the two variable capacitors. We saw those in a schematic, or we'll see them. The two in the Pi network, there's two of them, one on the input and one on the output. And then down in here is the switch for switching uh, between 40, 15, and 80 meters, the band switch as we would call it. And down in here is another uh, capacitor. So this is the components on top of the chassis. So let's take a look at the components uh, under the chassis. Here's the bottom of the tube socket. And a lot of components around this tube socket. Here's RF choke, capacitor, ceramic capacitor, mica capacitor. There's a little resistor in here. There's another resistor. Here's a little ceramic capacitor here and another little ceramic capacitor. Up here is the jack for the key. And here's another resistor. See, there's a color code on these resistors. And we have a, a video here in our series to read color codes. Going over here to the power supply, we see um, the electrolytic capacitors. They're very big, they're very large. Another capacitor down here. No, these are the rectifiers. I'm sorry, this is the rectifiers in here, the little rectifier package. A couple of more uh, resistors, and you see the color codes on those. Here's the bottom of the transformer with the leads coming off, the primary leads up here and the secondary leads coming off down in here. And here's a little terminal strip on the back with a couple more uh, ceramic, little ceramic capacitors. And up here is the switch for turning the unit on and off, just a little slide switch. So that's pretty much the physical components here. Thank you very much for watching our video on reading schematic diagrams, identifying electronic components using this Conair 400 transmitter. It's about 50 years old. We've enjoyed doing this video for you and hope you've enjoyed it. If you're a ham radio operator, happy hamming. Have a nice day.